Welcome to this week's video. In this video I will finish machining all the parts for my thread cutting guide. If you're interested in how I made all the parts, you should go and watch the previous videos I made of this build. And now, let's finish this project. The first thing I had to do was uh, on the previous part that I made was uh, turn down the outer diameter. So it, um, I got rid of the, of the rough surface so it looked nice. And you couldn't uh, cut yourself on the, on the sharp corners. And as you can see, the surface finish came out rather nice. Then I put in the new tool for uh, boring out the, the center. Here I measured the, the length of, of and the, the, the length and the diameter of the part, so I knew what exactly I had to um, turn the, the bore to. Then I took a light pass in the front, so um, I faced the part, so I had an accurate zero point with this tool, because it didn't really matter um, how how um, long this part is. Then I start to uh, turn out the diameter. I will need to um, get the press fit with the, with the thread insert that you uh, just saw when I measured it. Here you can see that it um, start to fit. I put the light um, taper on the back side of the part because I will have to press it in. And you can see I got about um, to a diameter that's a tenth of a millimeter smaller in the diameter. Um, that's a lot. That's really a, a big press fit. But um, all the forces from the thread cutting will be transferred to the handle via this diameter so I really want to have um, a strong bond and here uh, I'm using the boring bar that I have uh, bought recently with the alumin aluminum inserts and as you can see the surface finish just comes out absolutely gorgeous with that tool I um, will have to buy a, a normal turning tool that I would, can use these inserts because they just, the surface, it just looks so unbelievably great. It's like almost a mirror finish. So now I'm heating it the, the part up so I can uh, press it in because I would not be able to press it in without damaging anything um, that much. You can do a little bit obviously, but not a tenth of a millimeter in this size. And I also don't have a, a big press that would allow me to do something like that, so I'm just heating it up to um, 300 degrees Celsius. I want to be sure that, the, that it would um, go in and wouldn't get stuck, because <laughs> if it gets stuck and then it starts heating up the, the steel part that you want to insert, uh, you have a problem because you're not getting the thing out again ever and it's like <laughs> in like half or something like that so you have to be um, really fast when uh, inserting the, the, the part that you want to press in and you also have to have a hammer ready as you can see it didn't go in all the way and then I immediately had the hammer ready because um, five sec seconds more and it would not have uh, fit in there and obviously after letting it cool um, we can now try out if, if the four charge chuck fits on the part and 
it fits rather nicely I have to say myself and uh, it's also secured on there with the thread it doesn't come off if you uh, tighten it and when you cut the threads the, the the forces will be in the direction that the thread will be um, tightened so it will, will not loosen itself and now I will uh, make a test piece where you, you can see how this thing will work and uh, this part I will also then use to make a holder for the for the dice that I will then be able to put into the forge or chuck. Here I'm also using that tool to get the superb surface finish and uh, look at these chips. They're just wonderful, like this is just a, a beautiful tool, it cuts extremely good um, compared to a, a lot of the tools that I have. It's just a, a, it's just a joy to work to use this tool, to, to use this tool. Now I center drilled this uh, part with a NC center drill because uh, I bought it for the CNC and um, it obviously also works for the for the lathe and I think you get the you can immediately you could immediately do um, the center drilling and also the chamfering but I uh, I went too little so I had to come back and now you can see. I mounted the tap in the four jar chuck um, on the back for um, flats on the thing and then I can turn it on and use my hand as a as a clutch basically so I can just hold it lightly until it starts to um, slip in my hand and then it just turns and it doesn't break or anything like that and the, I can uh, just follow it. And that worked out, uh, I think, very good. And uh, now <laughs> I'm drilling out that thread because I will use this part for um, for the die holder. And for that I need the 8mm um, bore through the entire part. Then I needed to cut uh, a prism that I will be able to use to mount that uh, cylinder on my CNC mill. You will uh, understand for what I need this uh, right when I'm mounting it because I use this prism to um, press it into the other prism, the accurate one in the vise. There is a very little prism and then on the other side I put uh, this part so I have a bigger surface area that pushes this part in the, in the vise so it's uh, mounted securely. And then I aligned um, the cylinder with, with the spindle of my CNC by using this style indicator by moving the X and Y axis until it uh, read X, on both axes it read uh, zero, 00. I moved the, in the, the, the finger a bit more and then I just turned it around uh, by hand until it was zero on all sides and I used a piece of paper to uh, zero the Z axis. For this milling operation I am using a 0.4mm radial engagement with this uh, 3.175mm end mill. It's a 1 8 inch end mill, that's why it's uh, such a weird uh, number. But uh, that's the only one I have in that size, that uh, only has one flute. And because of that I'm using it. Um, 
I go uh, three and a half millimeters deep with this end mill right now. Um, I could go more than that, but it is a seven millimeters, seven millimeter deep pocket in uh, total. So it's just um, doing it in two passes. If I do more, I would have to take seven millimeters to get a faster result. And I don't think it would be able to handle seven millimeters. I am cutting here the sil uh, the bore that uh, that I will fit in, and on the top you can see I put uh, like the groove that's in the in the die, so it uh, it doesn't turn in there, and it's not um, relying on friction from a screw pushing it in into uh, into the holder, but it's actually just physically blocked by this uh, groove. You will mean what you will know what I mean uh, as soon as uh, as this part is finished. Um, there's like that little groove on the top, and then when I put it in, you can see that it will not uh, turn by itself. And then I can put it into the four chart chuck. That's why I put a chuck in there so I can mount uh, these things. Sorry for the finger in the picture, and then you just. Uh, thread it on a bit and then you turn it on and then you can loo um, let go with your hand when there's uh, enough thread cut or when you get to the shoulder you um, it will just spin in your hand and then you can turn off the machine and then uh, reverse again and with that thank you for watching and uh, until next week